very much. So, hi, I'm Craig. <laughs> I've always been a storyteller, um, ever since I was really young. And to prove it, here I am at uh, age three. <laughs> my first illustration. Um, creativity was very valuable. And as I was growing up, I was always encouraged to express myself and find ways to express myself um, in, in fun and interesting ways. And as I continued through adolescence, I found that technology really became uh, a huge part of, of what I did. And um, really, this hit a pinnacle in 1984 when I got my first video game system. When I got my Nintendo Entertainment System. My, um, my friends were content with sitting around and playing Super Mario Bros. for 12 hours a day. But for me, this was really the most phenomenal storytelling application I had ever found. Not only could we find uh, within, within a, an entertainment system like this the ability to combine sound and music and images and narrative, but we could also be to me, I realized that I needed to be able to create these things. And within two years, I found that I actually was able to. Um, in 1986, Electronic Arts released one of my favorite video games of all times, Ultimate Wizard, which none of you have probably ever heard of. Um, so I took a screenshot of my old Commodore 64, and you can see here that um, back in the day, this is a, a pretty typical game. Uh, it was a platform game. You controlled Wilfred the Wizard running around in little platforms, and your job was to collect treasure and avoid being killed. And that was really all you could do with it. <laughs> the amazing thing about Ultimate Wizard to me was that not only did you have this, this kind of fun game that you could, uh, you could experience over and over and over again, but the developers designed it to be an open game. So when you go to the main menu, there was actually a, a, what they called a construction kit. So I could actually go in there as a little eight-year-old kid in the 80s and actually build my own levels. And to me, this was the, the pinnacle of storytelling. I, could, I actually started using this and started telling stories about my family, my friends, my pets, you name it. Um, I would sit on my computer late up at night creating stories for people and then the next day would call them over and would show them these, these wonderful little narratives that I created. But if you were to ask me to do this in school, I probably would have looked something like <laughs> So to me, this was the medium in which I, I really have found myself. So fast forward 25 years from now, I work in the field of educational and instructional technologies and my real focus is finding new and innovative ways that we can connect teachers and students using technology. Um, so I really wanted to go back to my own childhood and say, you know what, the, the real formative things for me were being able to use technology to tell stories. Can I create a tool like that that lets kids kind of experience this rich act of creation as well, using modern technologies? Uh, so I came up with this thing. It's called Zooverse. Um, this was actually my thesis project at NYU. Um, I defended it back in May, and it's actually uh, it's spun off to be a, a much larger thing than, than what it actually is now. Um, Zoobers is a digital storytelling tool that lets anyone build their own 3D pop-up books. So rather than sitting here and, and just giving you the glossy, I'm actually going to show you. I know in these sorts of things, live demos are not always the best, but we're going to try. So this is actually Zoobers right here. This is it's a web-based application. This is a little story I wrote today. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, uh, Zoobers lets kids arrange content within three dimensions. So. You can use your mouse and rotate around and see your characters from multiple directions. Kids can place in uh, narrative structures so they can have their characters actually speak. Um, here to slay the dragon and save the princess, and he would say, oh no, not this again. <laughs> uh, characters can even contain audio. You can, I have a little chicken back there that collects. I won't play that for you right now. Um, and over time, kids can lay out their stories in a, uh, in a linear way so that you can have characters pop up from page to page to page. But the really cool thing about this is I wanted to not only take this 3D aspect and give kids the ability to create their own books, I wanted to be able to take this out and make it so the kids could be part of their stories themselves. And to do that, um, I came up with this idea where we could use the webcam, and we could have a computer actually turn on their webcam, and then if kids had a special little magic zooper symbol, if they held it up, the book that they created will fly up and will become part of the room with them. So kids can actually become part of their story. Um, and it actually works, we can actually go up nice and close. And Oops, lost it for a second. There we go. Pages will turn over. They'll fold in 3D. And this is all user created content. And if kids don't have a symbol, that's not a problem either. We actually have it set up so that you can make all your books using gestures. So you can make it come out, you can swipe your hand left and right, you can actually turn your pages in the room. Making this an interesting and, and fun new new media presentation tool for kids. Um, and then, you know, the other aspect of this is, okay, this is cool, this is fun, but how do you make it easy? How do you get back to that ultimate wizard style where yeah, I could use my joystick and I can use my keyboard in order to build a story? Um, so really, making it easy for kids to build was my primary focus. So we built a, a drag and drop interface. So kids can search for characters through a, a database of open source clip art. They can add those characters to books. They can drag and drop them in 3D. They can rotate characters around, make them larger or smaller. They can apply text. They can even record their own voice to have their own characters speak. 
Um, so this was my tool, this is what my vision was for kids, to create a real simple, easy way for them to be able to tell their own stories and bring them out into the world through the power of augmented reality. So, with that said, that's Zooburst. Um, it's been pretty popular. Uh, we re released our current version in August of, uh, of last year. We have over 21,000 people signed up since then, authors from over 43 different countries, and more than 50% of the people self-identify as teachers. And to me, that's really the, uh, the main focus here, because I designed this for kids to be able to express themselves, but really, I wanted to focus on teachers and giving them a tool that they can use to better connect with their students in the classroom. Uh, we've been focused, uh, um, featured in a number of academic uh, reports, such as the Horizon Report from the New Media Consortium, School Library Journal. We have an installation at the Telford Museum of Art, where you can actually go up in Savannah, Georgia, and swipe and play with the book in 3D right there in the museum. Um, but really, the thing for me was I created this tool, and now I wanted to see how the world was going to take it, how they were going to run with it, how they were, they were going to use it. So a couple weeks ago, I queried the Zoobers community and said, how are you using Zoobers? And I wanted to present some of the interesting findings that I found how people have taken this technology and are telling their own stories around the world. So um, for virtual book reports, um, I spoke with a teacher at Brandeis Elementary School in Louisville, Kentucky. This is a magnet school for uh, math science education. Um, and what they're doing is, is interesting. They're actually replacing the traditional book report using Zoobrush books. Um, they're pairing up fourth grade students with first grade students, and they're working in a collaborative environment where kids are working with each other to, to develop and build their own stories. Um, and then when they're finished, They'll actually present them to class using the augmented reality feature in lieu of PowerPoint. So they'll actually go up in front of the smart board, they'll present their, their stories, and then they'll swipe back and forth and actually become one with their book report. Um, in addition, they're also using it for promotional purposes. They have a, 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 a contest in, in Kentucky where they try to get um, um, the best, uh, rated as the best elementary school. So they actually created a promotional book where they actually put the news anchor from the local news station in. She was actually coming to visit the school. And, um, and they use this as their presentation, welcoming her to Brandeis um, mm -hmm. Elementary. So over on the other side of the world, um, at Haya International Academy in Cairo, students are using Zooburst as a way to um, narrate uh, differences between the digital divide and how it disproportionately affects the first world and the third world. Um, students are using Zooburst to uh, construct their narratives outside of Zooburst, then they're putting their content into the system, they're building their own books, and then they're sharing them on their own class website or blog. Uh, allowing students from multiple schools in multiple um, areas within Cairo to be able to speak back and forth and have an ongoing conversation about the digital divide. Um, I've used Zoopers in my own classes. I teach a class um, at the College of New Jersey for a, a group of kids with um, intellectual disabilities. And I teach a class on how to develop an electronic portfolio. And uh, as part of this class, we decided uh, we wanted to have a component of what your, your thoughts were for your future plans, what you were going to do when you graduated. So we used Zoobers to outline uh, our, our plans, our goals, and we created these and embedded Zoobers books into their electronic portfolios online. And then the students presented these at their final capstone presentation at the end of the semester. In addition, our Spanish department there is using this, uh, where high, uh, college kids are creating children's books in Spanish and narrating them using their newly acquired Spanish pronunciation skills um, and, allow, and creating these little children's books that kids can, uh, can listen to outside of, uh, of the Zoobers framework. Um, and then one of my favorites, uh, Ms. Eugene Tank from uh, Murmansk, Russia, is using Zuberst in her classes as a creative writing exercise. Um, she had her students construct novel, uh, interesting stories. They created their Zuberst books. They presented them using augmented reality. But it worked so well that she started up um, a small network of 53 schools across Russia. Those are all the Zuberst sites in Russia. Um, and they created a, uh, a global storytelling project across Russia, uh, narrating differences in nature, differences in architecture, differences in cultural um, sites around the, uh, around the country, and they're sharing these in a network of, of 3D pop-up books across mm -hmm. the state, or across the, uh, the country. So, um, so what's next? So uh, we're, we have a number of things that we're, we're working on right now. Um, really, it's all about the community. It's really all about what people want to see and what teachers in the, in the field are actually trying to do and what they want to do with their students. So some of the things we're working on are nonlinear storytelling, where kids can actually create choose-your-own-adventure type of um, scenarios, where consequences actually play into the, uh, the simulation that they're creating. Um, expanded community experiences, um, we find that commenting and having students be able to, to uh, work with each other and provide feedback to one another is incredibly important and we want to capitalize that. And we're also working on synchronous storytelling, so the two schools around the world who are geographically isolated can actually speak to one another in real time and tell stories to one another. So a school in China and a school in the United States can actually create a live Skype-like session with a 3D pop-up book in the middle where students can talk and communicate back and forth. But really the question mark there is, you know, it's about what the world wants. You know, teachers will come back to us and say, we really want to do this, and, and then we'll go ahead and build it. It's a very grassroots effort, um, and we, we just want to uh, 
I mean, this is as fun as possible for kids. So, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.